What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy, having a great day so far, and of course, testing negative for all those viruses. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Virus Update for Wednesday, August 6, 2025. If you are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all those viruses that can make us sick. There's a lot of viruses out there, and you need to be informed of what's going on with each and every one of these viruses. That's what I do here on my channel each and every day. Want to stay informed? Subscribe down below. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, and of course, leave your comments down below. And don't forget to check out our new data report fan club that I launched yesterday. Already, uh, taking a look at the latest news today, there's several news stories, not much in the way of COVID news today, but this I do have to start off with, and this is coming from Mike Horger, uh, COVID transmission in the southern U.S. may be higher now than last winter. Data are from which are scanned. The finding holds when excluding the most recent four days due to potential volatility, or in other words, maybe incomplete data. But yeah, uh, the southern U.S., take a look at this. It is really going up at this time. There's where they peaked at last winter, and you can see here, Though there are some times where, you know, it attempted to go down and then back up more, it's still on this overall upward trend. So the southern U.S. is doing really bad for COVID at this time. India today. Let's uh, take a look at how many active cases they have today in India. And it looks like just one more than yesterday. Pretty much the same. 225 versus 224. However, different from yesterday, they did add three new deaths for COVID. All right, moving on now to a different virus, uh, Martha's Vineyard. This is not the first time recently we talked about Martha's Vineyard. Did we not just talk about norovirus there about a week and a half ago? Now we're talking about a tick-borne illness being detected on Martha's Vineyard for the second time in 20 years. A case of Powassan virus has been detected in a Martha's Vineyard resident, again, second time in 20 years. Uh, the situation is being closely monitored by the island's local board of health and shared public health staff including public health nurse in case in the investigation coordinator so yes uh powassan virus uh ticks they have been it seems to me as if they have been increasing in population i know here in pennsylvania we see more ticks and i mentioned this recently when we talked about something with ticks and i got a lot of different comments saying uh, from people that are constantly pulling ticks off themselves yikes yeah be very careful with these ticks Moving on now to this, British Columbia CDC confirms 19 new measles cases in northern British Columbia after last week's slowdown. It says here Thursday of last week, they reported they had no new confirmed cases and only two probable ones. These 19 new cases now take their grand total for the year to 110 cases. Measles still very much a thing. All right, moving on to this now. We've been talking about uh, the NFL, maybe not so much here on the channel. I have tweeted a few things about the NFL. I promise I'm going to get that into the sports illness thread over on my site. Maybe I'll try and do that this evening. It's been a long day. More on that in a bit. Uh, yeah, NFL is dealing with yet another illness. Uh, player Brian Thompson Jr., who is a wide receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars, is dealing with some sort of illness. What that illness is, I honestly just do not know. But, yeah, he's dealing with some sort of an illness. And, well, he's not playing in the preseason game. Sounds like he'll be okay to go when regular season starts in just about a month from now. But, yeah, uh, Jacksonville Jaguars uh, player Brian Thomas Jr. dealing with an illness. All right, moving on to this. In um, New York City, we mentioned it before, there's an update. The Legionnaire's disease outbreak in New York City has now increased to 58 cases and two deaths. That's as of yesterday. I haven't seen anything new for today. But, yeah, this is something that is uh, rather concerning. Uh, it could be from, like, the water vapor. And you could inhale it, apparently, is what I'm reading. I'm not too educated on this virus. But I do know enough to know that New York City is a very populated city. So anytime we're talking about something like this... Um, it's very concerning. And the person who updated a thread on my site, Steve, he also noted, would mask help? Just 
wondering. Honestly, I can't answer that either. Would mask help with this disease since the particles can get into your lungs and can get really bad? Uh, I guess it's a possibility. Alrighty, moving on now to this. Remember yesterday I talked about, hey, it's very important that we clean air. Take a look at this. I got to show you. I replaced my air filters. I showed you the new filters yesterday. There's the new ones up top. Uh, below are the old ones. Uh, yeah, that's the first time they were replaced since April. Now, that's the actual HEPA filter. That shows you, if I didn't have an air purifier, all that stuff down below, this is just my office, just this room here, I would be breathing in all that stuff. Crazy, right? Take a look at this. There's what the pre-filter looked like before, and, well, there's the new pre-filter. Yeah, really bad, and really the only time I shut it off is uh, when I come to record these videos, because sometimes the noise gets too loud. I have noise cancellation, but... I don't want to take a chance that it starts making too much noise. All right, I have to update you on something else. I said it's been kind of a crazy day. Just got off the phone a little bit ago. Apparently, there is an update now on my Zolar injection. Uh, well, after we did yesterday's video, there was also an update as well. And it says here, here is the latest. I, I, put, I got a phone call back from someone at my pulmonary doctor's office. Same person I've been working with. Fantastic person. And I told them everything that happened after I talked. To her on Friday and she said she is going to call where I get my injections to see what can be done and then get back to me and there's another update to this which I have not added yet after today's video I'll get around to adding it I just spoke with her on the phone and it sounds like the route that we may be going is she's going to try and bill my prescription plan or try and get approval I shouldn't say the word bill just yet approval through my prescription plan which if you know the words prescription, that means perhaps, potentially, I would do a self-injection. And she said, it's really simple. There's auto-inject. I don't know. We will see uh, how I feel about doing it. Obviously, if that's the route I have to go, that's the route I'm going to have to go. But uh, I get leery about needles. When I go to get the injection done at a place, there's a company called IVX Health. They're starting to grow along the East Coast. Ever since COVID, I've had this with several different people who inject me. They said, COVID has just increased their business big time because there's so many people that are dealing with post-COVID issues. Keyword, post-COVID, long COVID issues. Uh, we'll see. If I have to go the route of injecting myself with Zolar every month, I guess that's what I'll have to do. But there's something else that's popping up, non-related to Zolar, where I'm a little concerned about injecting myself. I've had this issue long before COVID. It's starting to get a little bit worse, and I'm going to talk to my doctor about it. It's called, like for example uncontrollable movements and i know there's an actual term for that uh i'm seeing commercials for a prescription you can get for it i may try and go that route i can hold something perfectly still here's water let's take that hydration break shall we real quickly haven't done that in a while say i'm holding this glass now look right now i'm holding this glass perfectly still and then suddenly i could just you know jerk like that now that's me doing that myself but suddenly out of nowhere say it's a glass or say it's a pen where most people can hold it perfectly still i did have a little bit of shaking covid related and at times maybe even before covid because uh, shaking runs on my mom's side of the family there's some relatives that had it but i do sometimes get uncontrollable movements where i'm holding something still and then all suddenly i just jerk uh, i can think back to a time uh, several years ago i was holding a cup of coffee, perfectly still, getting it at a convenience store, and I just spilled it all over the place. I said, I'm terribly sorry. I have uncontrollable movement. I don't like, I, I can't control it when it happens. It never really bothered me that maybe it would happen once every so many weeks. I've noticed over the past month, it's gotten a lot more frequent. I can only assume COVID, post COVID, is the reason why it's getting more frequent, but what do I know? So, something I'm going to have to eventually look into and why is a good reason why I'm concerned about injecting myself because well what if i'm injecting myself and suddenly i have an uncontrollable movement ouch that would hurt already moving on we spent far too much time on this and i do want to take a look at several more things we do get the update from the uk tomorrow uh canada nothing's changed here covid flu a flu b rsv all low in wastewater uh let's take a look at what's going on with air quality say i need to refresh this still some air quality issues for portions of the Great Lakes in Pennsylvania. We're not under an air quality alert here in Pennsylvania. They're saying the smoke is elevated, but yet when I go outside, I kid you not, I can smell that smoke 
clear as day. Uh, maybe I'm more sensitive to things like this for my issues. I honestly just don't know. I do know I've had a headache all day. It's been on my right side. It's been above, like, my right eyebrow. It's almost like a migraine type thing. And I did have a coughing fit earlier today, which is one of the reasons why we are late with today's video. That and the headache. Yeah, it's been one of those uh, afternoons. This morning was not that bad. Taking a look at what's going on with air qualities today. And uh, this will refresh. And air qualities are still a problem in several places. Of course, the West Coast is now dealing with wildfires and wildfire smoke. But the worst air qualities appear to be in the east. And take a look at this. Uh, Philadelphia is still in the red here. I don't know why we're not under air quality alert. I really don't. We should be. These are bad readings right here. I'm still seeing readings well above 100 to even localized uh, 150 up in New York State. Parts of New York State and central Pennsylvania still have air quality alerts. EMS calls in Florida. Yeah, that's still a thing today as uh, well. Uh, the, the, obviously, there's always going to be calls, but it seems to be a little bit less today. So that's good. But breathing problem, an unknown problem, that's showing up several times. Philadelphia yesterday, hey, 739 EMS incidents. That is a drop. It's well below 800. We will take it. Taking a look at what's going on with EMS calls in Montgomery County, not too bad right now. Hey, fever is showing up. Earlier, I saw a bunch of respiratory emergency calls. That is never a good thing to see. Chester County, not too bad right now. Uh, Bucks County continues its busy stretch. You saw it was at 10 there. I need to refresh. A little less busy now. That's a good thing. Taking a look at what's going on with Pennsylvania hospitals. Slightly less busy today, which is a good thing. Taking a look at New Jersey. And we can see New Jersey uh, does have just a couple of hospitals. Inspire Medical Center. Mannington has some sort of a specialty issue. And Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, yet again today, is having a patient volume issue. And they are diverting at this time. New York State, slightly more cases than yesterday. 407 COVID cases reported today. Hospitalizations in New York State, 361. 32 people in the ICU. Taking a look at New York City, and this is going to refresh on us, but let's see. Did New York City drop again today? Or did they go? No, New York City is reporting the same number of hospitalizations as yesterday, 156. But ICU numbers increased by 5 from 9 up to 14 today. All right, taking a look at what's going on in Virginia. Haven't looked at this dashboard in a while, but emergency department visits for COVID are trending up. Influenza RC stable at this time. Uh, almost 1% of the emergency department visits are now for COVID in Virginia, and they are trending in the wrong direction. You can see here, COVID is trending upward. And guess what age group is being hardest hit by COVID at the moment, or I should say for respiratory viruses in general. And you can see here, yep, zero to four years old. How about that? Most people would say, oh, it's just only grandma. Well, no, it's not just only grandma. If you have a child from zero to four years old and you're in Virginia, that's, that's the age group getting hit the hardest. And we're seeing that happen in many different uh, states at this time. So definitely something to keep an eye on. All right, let's take a look at a few wastewater sites to end the day. And I think we'll just do a couple from each region. I want to show you uh two in the northeast uh area i was just near i was in this area in maine when i went to maine and here's the nearest wastewater site lewiston maine check this out now i think this needs to be fixed obviously there's probably some wonky data maybe insignificant data subject to change look at this straight upward and i always say despite it being wrong treat it as if it could potentially be right because you could easily get infected if COVID was rising this fast in Lewiston, Auburn, Maine area. Yeah, not good. And mind you, I always like to keep you, I always like to remind you with Maine, away from, say, Portland, Augusta, Bangor, you know, all these uh, different places with summer homes. Like down here is called the Lakes region. There are oh so many camps on lakes that are not connected to sewage systems. So, Wastewater data, yeah, it, it, while it can be helpful in these type areas, which there is no wastewater site around here, uh, it's not really doing you much because, you know, someone could have COVID at a camp. Well, guess what? That goes to a septic tank. It does not come up in the local sewage treatment facilities. Wastewater site, and it just does not. So that is really concerning. And speaking of summer camps, yes, there are people that own private, you know, like summer homes, but there are also a ton of, you know, Summer camps, you send your kid to summer camp. There's a lot of places like that around there. So the fact that COVID's going up, 
uh, summer camp outbreaks could be a thing soon. Take a look at this. Stanford, Connecticut is now back in the high category for COVID. I think they just entered that, and it is continuing to go upward at this time. They got any problems with the other bars? Oh, look at this. Measles was detected there uh, back in May. Yeah, hmm, that's relatively interesting. They only just started doing measles here on uh, wastewater scan just recently. All right, look at Florida. Still high at almost every wastewater site. There is one in uh, Miami that is not updating. I'm sure that may be high as well. Let's go take a look at what is going on in Fultondale, Alabama. Haven't looked there in a while. And, well, COVID is now listed high. It's continuing to rise, even if we X out the last few updates, which could be missing data or incorrect data, whatever the case may be. That's still going to be listed at rising and potentially high in this area. So that is not good to see. Let's see what's going on northwest of Houston, Texas. And we can see there, whoa, yeah, things are not going well there. Things are high for COVID in that area as well. Let's take a look at what's going on up in the Midwest. And though the Midwest is listed at medium, that seems to be the region that has the least amount of high wastewater sites. And I do kind of wonder why um, they are still listed in medium. Well, they do have a lot of sites that are medium. And uh, here's St. Cloud, uh, Minnesota. You see, COVID's not doing too bad there at this time. Any other viruses with issue? No. This wastewater site, though, it's listed high for COVID. Uh, and look at this again. You can see there. Yeah, it went up only slightly. I, I sometimes don't understand their calculations. All right, let's look at somewhere else. That Oh, let's just randomly. How about we go to South Bend, Indiana, and see what's going on there. We see there COVID is relatively low. Everything else is fine at this time and you know what let's also take a look at michigan i get a lot of comments from michigan that's fantastic very popular uh, for very popular state on this channel thank you uh for watching me from michigan warren michigan here a uh, medium for COVID at this time and yeah that is continuing to rise do you have any other issues uh we do have hepatitis a detection at this time so that is relatively interesting now let's go out to the west coast and see what's going on there. We'll take a look at Las Vegas. I think we're going to go over to the CDC site because uh, there's so many states that are not on wastewater scan out there. And CDC for code, it is medium. It is rising slightly. Uh, it seems like there's always a performer or some sort of musician starting a residency there. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. I hear about them all the time on, uh, I like to listen to Sirius XM in a car. I hear about it quite frequently. Take a look at this. Uh, measles there is being detected at this time as of August 1st, so there is a measles detection now in Vegas. Yikes, that's not good. Uh, let's go over to the CDC page. I was not going to uh, show this today. Do I even have it queued up? Yes, I do. And let's go somewhere on the West Coast from the CDC. How about we take a look at what is going on in New Mexico? Shall we? Do we have New Mexico here? Here it is. And we'll see what's going on there. Low for COVID at this time. It is trending upward. And let's also take a look at what's going on in the state of Washington, where Washington is now coming up moderate for COVID. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Wednesday edition of the Virus Update. If you enjoyed today's update, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, and of course, leave your comments down below. Hey, if you leave a comment, let me know where you're from. That seems to be coming a thing, so, you know, leave the state, uh, country, hey, if it's another country, let me know where you're from. I always love to see where my watchers and subscribers are from and remember i did start this new membership do you want to get my videos earlier not all of them but at least maybe two times a week i'll post my videos earlier um and you can have early access to them before they go public i don't make them public to the afternoon although we did a youtube short this morning uh you can do that um it's just like 5.99 a month and uh, you can now do this uh, membership club. YouTube has been sending me emails galore about this. I wasn't going to do it. I decided to do it. And there's also some other things there. Maybe I'll post some member-only updates. And every once in a while, maybe a member-only video of how I'm feeling or whatever the case may be. Alrighty, folks. I will see you again tomorrow. Until I see you again tomorrow, stay safe, everyone. And have a fantastic Wednesday afternoon. Thanks for watching.